Ladies and gentlemen, as promised, I am here today with SCP-001, The Scarlet King. This was probably one of the top three most suggested and requested SCPs you wanted me to do a little bit of a deep dive into. As I have learnt over the last couple of time, SCP-001s are proposals. None of them are, uh, we are uncertain as to which is the real one, because just knowing which is the real one can actually wipe out humanity or something. So that's wild. However, there are other SCPs like 999, which I did do research in already, Tickle Monster, and that one is the one of the children of the Scarlet King. So we are about to look into potentially one of the coolest SCPs of all time. And I'm thinking of doing like a video power scaling the Scarlet King to see how it pairs up against like Olympian gods. Like I was thinking of doing Scarlet Scarlet King versus Hades in a death battle style where I power scale both of them. Let me know if you are interested in me actually doing that. I am very, very eager to do that. Uh, 10,000 likes, and I will. Also 10,000 likes, and I'll do more SCPs. Let me know more SCPs you want me to do in the description. Subscribe! All right, let's see what the Scarlet King is all about. The SCP Foundation is no stranger to pure evil. Oh. Whether it's a reptile that wants to end all life. Listen, it's just a reptile, dude. I did already do a 682 research video. I looked into SCP that can't be destroyed reptile. I get it, it can't be destroyed, but there's no way it's strong enough to end all life. Like, let's be real, bro. It's just a lizard, like, come on. Maybe Goku couldn't kill it, but it couldn't kill Goku. A sadistic old man with his own torture dimension. Or the what the shit? I don't know that one. The personification of death itself lurking beyond <laughs> a limestone cavern. Oh my god, is that the Into the Nidosphere? Cavern. That's SCP-106? Alright, I have to do 106 later. What if there was something even worse out there? The embodiment of chaos and cruelty. Exi Lord Nux Taku. The man who predicted Twitch is hentai. Existing across multiple realities and dimensions. And what if it was coming for us? Coming? Bro, just like everyone that's been on Twitch lately watching the new Twitch meta. Dude, I'm still so psyched that my Twitch is hentai song was an actual prophecy. This is the Scarlet King. God damn, he looks cool. All right, all right, Scarlet King. Let's see what we got here. Believed by many to be the ultimate evil behind much of the trouble the Foundation has faced. And some even speculate that fighting him was the reason the Foundation was created in the first place. Whoa! That's insane. The whole Foundation was made to take down the Scarlet King? But what exactly is the Scarlet King? Yeah, yeah. He's known by many names, almost always including some allusion to the color red. And then a reference. Well, yes, yeah, Scarlet King, all right. Harak, Kar Harak, the Red Shah, the Crimson Kar. PTE 616 Mendez Vakida, the La La Raja. That's a sick one. To royalty or power. Harak, Kaharak, the Red Shah, the Crimson Khan. PTE 616 Mendez Ex Machina, okay. the La Ha Raja. And, of course, SCP-001, to name a few. And like many of the Foundation's mysterious enemies, stories about his true nature and origins abound and are often contradictory. According to the- That's insane. They made the entire Foundation to take down the Scarlet King and they still know so little about him. Is he really that dangerous? Like, dude, you think this guy could actually go up against mythological Hades? The official SCPs He's hyper Satan? What does that even mean, Chet? 001 files of Tos proposal. Symbology of the Scarlet King has existed in multiple cultures throughout history, with the king often depicted the same way, as a huge red demonic figure, often wearing a gold crown or other headdress. Bro, just hyperspace Satan, you were so right. <laughs> it's just hyperspace Satan. Indicating royalty. He shows up looking similarly within different cultures mythology. Oh my god, is that the Greeks? I know those guys. Apologies. Despite existing at different points in history, or them not having the means to- Is that the Vikings? Bro, is he just like the ultimate figurehead behind the evil in every religion throughout history? Holy shit, that is so cool. Wait, so this guy, this Scarlet King, dude, they, they really developed a super monster. Like, they some some guy really out there- Cooked! They cooked up one of the coolest main villains of all time. Communicate with one another. A number of entities that the oh SCP my glob. Foundation is familiar with are believed to be somehow connected to the Scarlet King, including SCP-2317, 
a wooden door leading to the realm of a being known as the Devourer. He's expected to escape and cause an apocalyptic oh, event in the next 30 years. Chibi Doki would smash, though, so that's fine. But really, there's no way of knowing just how many SCPs are directly connected to the Scarlet King. Apparently, from what I've learned, SCP-682, the can't be destroyed reptile, as well as SCP-999 the Tickle Monster, are both children of SCP-001, the Scarlet King. Like, this is one prolific fellow, holy crap. The Foundation's official file on the Scarlet King once designated his containment class as Keter, but that has since been downgraded to safe. What? If this man's really hyperspace Satan, why would he? <laughs> okay? According to the file, any attempt to change this designation is likely to lead to horrifying results. Dude. Honestly, that's- I just started shaking a little bit. You know the only thing scarier? Or how you upgrade a level 10 threat? Like an S tier threat? The only thing above that is something that cannot even be defined as a threat at all. Because even defining it as a threat will destroy you. Oh my god, bro. That is one of the biggest flexes in anime. They had to define it as safe. Because even defining it as dangerous is dangerous. Okay, that's crazy. It is widely known that the Scarlet King still has considerable influence over a number of groups. Right, that's the Gate Guardian. I never actually did a deep dive on this guy either, but he was another highly suggested one. ...individuals and anomalies in our universe. And if ever he made his way into our universe, uh -oh. it would likely lead to the irreversible damage of reality itself. Oh boy. Yep, when I do Scarlet King versus Hades, it is not going to go well at all. So then why safe? And why are the O5 Council so adamant that it remained that way? Getting to the bottom of this mystery is exactly why we're here today. But to fully grasp the true nature of the Scarlet hmm. King, we must first understand the man whose life and fate have always been tied to it. Okay. Dr. Robert Montauk. All right, okay, all right, okay, all right, it's not so bad, all right, all right. Extra-dimensional hyper-Satan is, he seems pretty dangerous, but who knows, maybe he's friendly. If that name feels oddly familiar to you, it's because of its association with one of the Scarlet King's most recent attempts to enter our reality. What? SCP-231. This do I SCP- know, do, I don't know 231. He often referred to as the Brides of the Scarlet King. Oh, I do know 231. Yeah, and each one of them died in childbirth to another creature. Was formed of seven women. That is why level 5 Gyat Riz Skibbity Toilet is stronger than level 4 Gyat Riz Skibbity Toilet. This is why I don't read chat, okay? Seven, by the way, being an extremely significant number for the king, all- <laughs> Dude, he just wants to flex on Satan. Satan's like 666, he's like, ha! I'll do you one better! Seven! Oh, dabs. Kidnapped by the most recent in a long line of the king's devoted cults known as the Children of the Scarlet King. Damn. Each of these seven unfortunate women were impregnated with anomalous horrors, such as the infamous SCP-682. Oh my and every god, so dude, this man's semen became a creature that can't be destroyed. <laughs> Holy shit, what does that say about the guy? Every time one of these horrors were birthed, a catastrophe occurred and the mother died. At the time, Dr. Montauk was a prominent researcher studying this anomaly, and as six catastrophes had already occurred, pressure was mounting to figure out a way to prevent the final birth. But as he was working on the issue, Dr. Montauk was struck with a personal tragedy. The mysterious what? disappearance of his 14-year-old brother, Jacob. Dude, this guy, this interdimensional Satan, is so scary that so far we've just been talking about the horrors of this guy without actually him stepping foot in the actual corporeal world. He managed to kidnap the guy's son to bamboozle him and waste his time so that the seventh mother can give birth that's wild how much influence he, st he actually has despite not even being present brother whatever whatever okay who cares whatever fear and anger montauk believed that this must have something to do with the scarlet king and his disciples wanting revenge montauk proposed an idea so horrifying that the details were never made public Bro, was it a procedure the pregnant lady they're known as 110 montauk to be performed on the final bride at regular intervals. Calling them brides is so fucked up. However, this wasn't the end of Dr. Montauk's fraught relationship with the Scarlet King. 
it was just the beginning. To give you some perspective on just how dangerous the Scarlet King is, yeah, the SCP Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition decided to put aside their differences. <laughs> Finally, the scientists and Satanists have united as one. At long last, human <laughs> humanity is reaching peak creativity. Let's go, baby. Form a joint effort to stamp out the children of the Scarlet King. They were successful in this mission, and even man- <laughs> And these soldiers with the machine gun, they have this one fucker with a robe. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Oh lord, this is somehow wild. They thought that the Satanists would help. ...managed to capture the children's leader, a mysterious man named Depeche Spivak, Dr. Montauk, who became the lead researcher on 231 and 2317 was naturally the first choice for interviewing Depeche about the true nature of the children and of the Scarlet King. Dr. Montauk could okay. never be the impartial interviewer that the SCP Foundation wanted, though. The suspicion that the Scarlet King or the children had something to do with the loss of his younger brother still lingered just beneath That's the surface. Nutty. Man is so fucked up. Dude, this Scarlet King just gets away with everything, doesn't he? That's nutty. Like a lot of cult leaders, Depeche was extremely cryptic in his answers to Dr. Montauk's questioning. Yeah, He'd this is why you can never interrogate Satanists, bro. They, none of them ever tell you straight, you know what I'm saying? He heard of the doctor from the reputation of the horrifying Montauk procedure and was surprised to see him so calm and courteous in person. A few key facts about the king and his cult were revealed in the first few rounds of questioning. Okay. The children had once worked with the serpent's hand before being excommunicated. The serpent's hand? Bro, this man has... Why does he have so many names and titles? Bro, just stick with one. <laughs> we, we get it, dog. ...for their allegiance to the king. And they had stolen sacred texts from the mystical Wanderer's Library to Long assist the in their summoning bro. rituals. Depeche also revealed that the Scarlet King is bound by three mm -hmm. laws. The Law of Blood, the Law of Concrete, and the Law of Howling. Man needs laws to understand him? Are these like the physics in his dimension? Oh my god, that's insane. When I, whenever I see like the Law of, I think of, you know, um, the laws of physics. Is this just how the world even works under his under his worldview? Is he so powerful? He does, He's not even contained by the physics that we understand? I don't know. We'll see. That's crazy. Dr. Montauk, confused and frustrated by Depeche's secrecy, yes, had to learn more. He found an old memoir from a former member of the Children of the Scarlet King, Jack Hirsch, who had the ability to invade the minds of people from the past and experience what they experienced. He recounted a battle between the Scarlet King and his followers, and a group of time-traveling Turkmen warriors from SCP-3838. What? <laughs> Dude, you have an army of monsters at your disposal, and you took Turkish time travelers? I feel like there could have been a better way to do this somehow. I don't know why I'm thinking that, but what? Dude made the Suicide Squad and was like, yep, I need Turkish warriors ASAP. Hurst saw both sides of the battle. From the perspective of the children of the Scarlet King, their lord ruled over them from an immense fortress embedded in a volcano. God from the perspective damn. of the Turkmen, the children were starved and beaten peasants, commanded by the king's voice in the roaring howl of the wind. I am so confused. I don't even know why this is, like, even relevant. Is this just, like, a random history lesson? How all these time-traveling Turkish people were just murdered by Sauron? Montauk also found extensive records of summoning rituals performed by various Scarlet King-aligned cults. Interestingly, some of them incorporated the use of carved SCP Foundation symbols. The SCP Foundation symbols are part of the Satan summoning symbols? That's somehow really scary. It's almost like the literal creation of the SCP Foundation is just part of this guy's plan to end up invading. It's almost like whatever you do, and no matter how you try to get away, you are just heading closer and closer to your own fate and your own demise. It's like this weird metaphysical impending doom. This weird feeling of just complete impotence against his wrath and majesty. What could this mean? Montauk returned again to Depeche, who finally gave him the truth about the law of blood. 
This I hope they is tortured the... the fuck out of this guy. If there's a Scarlet King out there ready to royally fuck with reality, bro, I, you gotta use some some CIA waterboarding methods to get the information out of this guy. Law of the Scarlet King. It's defined by poverty, violence, starvation, hate, okay. and most of all, fear. Like the serfs in the Middle Ages, persecuted by and subjected to violence from the nobles. To the children of the Scarlet King, this sense of holy pain and awe is the only way to live. The alternative- Torture is illegal, Nux? Dude, these guys, the, the SCP Foundation sends in D-class SCP guys to literally die to test them on monsters. Don't tell me about laws, okay? This dude has the laws of blood, okay? Man just stood up there and said, it's Mogan time, and proceeded to mog all over the place. Empty safety and false comfort. Buildings, easy to access food, healthcare, knowledge, technology. This Here is everything that the Scarlet King knowledge. despises. But the mystery only deepened as Montauk found files from a former Foundation operative by the name of Agent de Beauvoir. Montauk okay. learned that the Scarlet King didn't seem to appear until after the Foundation was created. And Wait a second, oh my god. The SCP Foundation is gathering all of these creatures, all of these anomalies throughout all of time, all of these creatures that spawn from the chaos of the Scarlet King. Somehow, that is beckoning him closer. What, what if the Scarlet King is the embodiment of chaos? So all of these anomalies in the SCP Foundation that are just constantly just beings and devices and creatures that somehow don't obey the laws of physics. They are chaos in this world. In a world, a corporeal world that we live in. Order is defined by physics. It's defined by rules and laws. All these anomalies are not defined by physics and therefore are an embodiment of chaos. What if bringing all of them together under the reign of the SCP Foundation. What if that is what's building the Scarlet King's entrance into the world? That is such a cool villain concept. I'm so blown away right now. And in fact, it seemed that the greater interest the Foundation took in the Scarlet King, the more powerful he became. How could this be? Interesting. So he grows based on fear, right? As long as no one knows he exists, he's not really a threat. Once people find out about him and start to fear him more and more, it makes him more and more dangerous. So cool. Things were also getting stranger on a personal level for Dr. Montauk. Depeche repeatedly pressed him about his brother's disappearance and the Montauk. <laughs> oh my god, dude, he's just so annoying. Montauk procedure during the interviews. Little by little, it was beginning to take its toll. Oh the questions god. still plagued him. What was the law of howling? Who or what really is the Scarlet King? How did he come to be? And I love how every question that he has is just making the Scarlet King stronger. Montauk's search was causing him to act more like the children of the Scarlet King, ranting about- Yo! The search drives him to insanity, which will ultimately make him a subject of chaos. <gasps> What a cool villain! Oh my god, dude! Of the horrors of the modern world. How all of us are living a lie. How the only honest way to live is suffering under the dominion of the Scarlet King. This philosophy is summed up in the words of one cultist named Arya Dene Cartwright, who right. said, We must learn what it is to die, to be enslaved, truly, brutally enslaved, okay. with no compassion or compunction from our masters. We must learn what it is okay. to be taken towards a single purpose, to know and truly understand. This is some guy on Twitter writing a twit longer. Man just got offended by capitalism and he decided he's gonna take down the patriarchy and he just starts going. <laughs> he just starts going, bro. And our lack of agency. We must be beholden to the words of gods and darkness, the tempest-tossed refuse of ah. a race of fools. We must kill modernity, postmodernity, with all its analysis and sneering observation. There is only one rule, <laughs> the rule of chaos for humanity. For life! Oh my for god, bro thinks he's an anime villain. <laughs> he's really, he's microdosing on Kaiba monologues right now. Or the Scarlet King. Basically, yes. anytime he may- Yes, dude, I love those guys. <laughs> I love those guys. Every time I hear one of those massive anime speeches, it just makes me so happy. And he tries to exert control over the world. The Scarlet King gets stronger. Every time they try to understand or organize or categorize their world, 
The Scarlet King gets stronger. Because chaos is born from order. That's insane. What a cool way to look at it. As colonial and imperial powers conquered and invaded lands like India, Africa, and South America, and subjugated their beliefs under Western ideas, the Scarlet King grew stronger. Montauk was beginning to truly understand the power of his enemy here. And even worse, he was starting to understand his part in it. Montauk, That's slow insane. being driven mad by the knowledge he was gaining, realized that the Scarlet King's greatest enemy, the SCP Foundation, was also his greatest source of power. Was also its greatest asset. Alright, I was close. In fact, I would go as far as to say that I was cooler. Every time they tried to understand the monster, to give him some kind of comprehensible form, they only made him more powerful. Just in time with Montauk's new revelation, a red crack appeared in the wall of Depeche Spivak's containment cell. Oh my god! A portal to the realm of the Scarlet King. Foundation staff found they were unable to enter the cell, and Depeche demanded a final interview with Montauk. With no other options, the Foundation relented. Man, might as well go in there. Listen, listen, bro. If the gate to hyper hell opens up right in here, none of us are going to turn out great. So might as well send him in because like, what are you going to do? Run away from interdimensional Satan? In their very last conversation, Depeche congratulated Montauk for finally understanding what he was dealing with. The Scarlet King, Depeche told him, is an idea, a concept. He is a being given power through the conflict between the old and the new. This is the law of the howling. What the frick? The Scarlet King's endless rage at the direction the world and humanity has taken. The King, according to Depeche, hated the Foundation's belief that science and rationality was the true path to progress. The King saw Did the- Did he really hate it? I mean, according to this cultist guy, he obviously didn't hate it because his whole gimmick is the fact that the more order there is, the more chaos it could breed. That's crazy. Scarlet King saw Twitter and gained all of its power. Scarlet King opened up Twitch one day to see the uh, the new Twitch um, artistic nudity meta and was just like, damn, bro. This is little more than petty arrogance. The reason Montauk's procedure on the final bride of the Scarlet King was so effective was because it wasn't born out of science. It was born out of hate, pain, the I desire for revenge, and in this- Bro, the bro, man, out here with the law of howling, the law of blood, the law of concrete, never heard of the law of consent, SMH, my head, cringe, am I right, game? Scarlet King's realm, that would be all there is, unless our world, and especially the Foundation, changed its course, the Scarlet King's rise to absolute is power- INEVITABLE! be inevitable. Yo, he said the thing. Pre-watch, Nux, I can't believe you pre-watch. Montauk, his mind practically gone, asked one last question. Did the children or the Scarlet King take his brother, Jacob? When Depeche told him the answer, no. And in response, Montauk shot him dead. Why, why would you do What about the law of getting some bitches? So true, Chet finally bringing an end to the children of the Scarlet King. In light of his new revelations, Montauk begged the O5 Council to change their ways in order to avoid letting the Scarlet King break into our reality. They refused, saying Montauk's ideas were too radical. But they knew they couldn't just ignore the threat posed by the Scarlet King. They would have to take some steps. And so the O5 Ooh. Council of the SCP Foundation, Insane. the most powerful and secretive group in the entire world, in order to prevent the most dangerous threat that humanity has ever known from breaking into our reality. I don't even know if this is the greatest threat humanity's known. I think this is literally safe. I think they're, they're, this is just a very Nux philosophy that uh, you've probably heard me say in the past. When there's something that is so dangerous and so horrifying that there's nothing you can actually do about it, why worry about it? It's like, it's a very strong philosophy I've had for a while. Like a lot of really sucky shits happened to me in the past and I'm just like, bro, why worry about it? It happened, it's irrelevant. Can you do something about it? No, then move on with life. If he invades the world, the world is dead and there's no way to stop him from invading the world. At this point, 
There's no point even thinking about him existing. Being worried about an inevitable fate is not going to change the inevitable fate. Change the classification of the Scarlet King from Keter to Safe and made its description on the official Foundation files deliberately vague. The o because what's the point? The more you fear him, the stronger he gets. Label him safe and live your life, because it's not like there's anything you could do. Life Council thinks this will be enough to stop the Scarlet King's power from continuing to grow. But Montauk knew it wasn't enough. He had seen the truth, Montauk. and he couldn't unsee it. While the Foundation was going on as normal, Montauk grew hmm. to despise them. He knew the Scarlet King was coming, he knew that he Coming. couldn't be stopped. And Just that like everyone that was on Twitch today. <laughs> that joke's gonna age really well when this goes up on Nuxenor. Our whole reality was little more than sitting ducks. Dr. Robert Montauk is no longer a researcher for the SCP Foundation. No. Dr. Robert Montauk chose a different path. Oh my god. He's now a dude literally went to the dark side of the force because the dude was so badass. That's awesome. What? Child of the Scarlet King, a devotee of madness, hate, and chaos. You can't beat the Scarlet King after all. And as the old adage goes, if you can't beat him, join him. What a cool fucking story. Holy shit. He's right though. Like, what are you gonna do? You beat him? You won't. You literally won't. Just lick some assholes and get yourself a, a comfy cushion under his rule. Now go watch SCP-682, Ways the Foundation Tried to Kill the Hard to Destroy Reptile. True. In fact, you should do that. On my channel, I also have uh, a deep dive into 682. You should definitely check that one out. Uh, in fact, you just go to the whole SCP Nuxploration uh, playlist. Because Lord Nuxalor will keep grinding and never stop that grind, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, that was a really good one. I am so hyped. Scarlet King probably is my... This is for sure my favorite one so far. Like, I, I liked a lot of them. Uh, I really liked the Plague Doctor I thought was really, really cool. But this is... This is easily the peak. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam!